So let's do it one final time. Last year of the four team playoff and we haven't had this much anticipation since the first year in 2014 when Ohio State Baylor TCU were fighting for one spot and there are four teams for two spots. It would appear today. The rankings are in. Brandon has put them into the Viz graphics machine and we are about to unveil who will be in the college football playoff for the 2023 season. It is presented by AT&T. The final rankings from the selection committee, the number one team in the country is. We are seeing these when you do, and it's Michigan. There was some thought because Washington has a couple more wins against the top 25 that maybe the Huskies would move into that spot. But the Wolverines, we assume, will go to the Rose Bowl. The semifinals are in the Rose Bowl and in the Sugar Bowl on New Year's Day, the perfect setting for the semifinals. And the Wolverines are going for the third straight year. They're 13 and 0. There's Jim Harbaugh. Who's got it better than you, Jimmy? You see it. <laughs> Determined, resolute, probably. Oh, I don't see any whole milk there. Just orange juice. My <laughs> coke. Who's number two? We assume it will be the Washington Huskies. And it is indeed. What a job. Kalen DeBoer and Washington ripped through nine and a half point underdog to Oregon in the Pac-12 championship game. People thought they escaped in Seattle and they absolutely made a statement and they're going to the playoff for the first time since the 16 season. Yeah, I think to the point where people assumed that Oregon was going to win that game. If you mm -hmm. felt very confident Oregon was going to win that game and the way Washington took the field and started that game set the tone and it never look back from there and to me the physicality of the Huskies dominated you thought Oregon was going to be the more physical team Washington controlled the line of scrimmage and won the game okay now remember how the committee does this you have six teams in a group then you rank them and the top three are taken off the board then and then they repeat the process so when the rankings the final time they went through the group phase here's the third team that was taken off and put on the board who's number three The Texas Longhorns. Steve Sarkeesian's team winning a conference championship for the first time since 2009 and making the playoff for the first time. Longhorns really haven't even been close to making the playoff. And here they are, final year of the 14 field. Bullers! We assume that will put them in New Orleans. And while Washington's the second seed and will wear the home jerseys, that's going to be somewhat of an advantage from a crowd standpoint for Texas, one would think, if that is indeed how the semifinals are matched up in the sites that they have. So we have Michigan, Washington, Texas. As we said right off the top, you've got these one spot left, and you've got four teams with resumes. Texas now has made it into the field. Let's have a look at these remaining resumes. Three teams, one spot. Alabama, Georgia, Florida State. Kirk, how should this come out in your judgment? Alabama should be a four. Alabama should be the a injury, four. The injury, the injuries to Florida State is just, you can't avoid it. It's nothing against what they accomplished. Obviously, what they accomplished is extraordinary to be undefeated, be an ACC champion. But that injury to Jordan Travis is part of what the committee takes into consideration. If you're looking at Alabama versus Florida State under the current team and roster, it'd be very, very hard to imagine Alabama not being there at four. We go back to the rankings in the unveil. Let's look now at number six and see who's been eliminated and see what the final decision came down to. Who's number six? The Georgia Bulldogs. So after consecutive national championships, Georgia will not compete in the playoff. And this is also the first time that the team that was number one in the penultimate rankings has fallen completely out of the college football playoff field. So this leaves us with the decision that everyone thought we would end up having. Florida State or Alabama. One spot, whoever's four plays Michigan. Number five, heartbroken. Who's number four? 
and Alabama returns to the playoff. And so we have another unprecedented situation as Florida State winds up at number five. And Florida State is the first undefeated wow. champion from a Power Five conference to fail to make the field in the college football playoff era. Wow. Uh, I'm, I'm not shocked uh, with how Florida State played the last couple weeks. They just have dropped off considerably at quarterback. And it's, and it's understandable, and I feel terrible for them. They did everything you could possibly ask them to do, and here they are on the outside looking in. A lot of people will have big issues with this. They'll ask, why do we play the games? Why are we looking at a team that's undefeated that did everything asked of them to punch their ticket? But the committee actually did the thing that they've talked about for the last 10 years. Forever it's been, well, you know, it's kind of the most easy to justify. Well, this team has zero losses. This team has one loss, so therefore the zero-loss team should be ahead of the one-loss team. This is the head-to-head. -head. They took everything into account. They took a step back. They acknowledged injury, which they've talked about in the past, mm -hmm. and they put in the four best teams. And that is not an easy thing to do. So I want to tip my cap to the committee because that is a difficult decision to make, and they think they probably went with the thing that was a – a little less popular than it would have been had they just gone with the undefeated Power 5 champ. Well, I'm going to completely disagree with you. To, to, to me, this, this is a travesty to the sport because we go out there on the field and we play the game. And regardless of whether it looks good at the quarterback position, regardless whether we win with offense, whether we win with defense, the name of the game is to win. And that's a reason never before has this not been done, winning a Power 5 conference, going undefeated, and not getting into the playoff. So I, I understand we want to look at style points and who are we going to get for the best matchups. But that's not what this is about. This is about understanding to get the four best teams. One team has a loss, and that's Alabama. One team doesn't in Florida State. And the fact that this committee could take a Power Five conference champion that's undefeated, those kids have went out there and busted their behind and not get into the playoff based on the eye test. Mind you, this is the same Alabama team who needed a prayer in Jordan Hare to beat an Auburn team that lost to New Mexico State. So that's really what has me bothered right now. Re Reese, uh, can you deliver the strength of record, strength of schedule thing? This is, because th you're making okay. it sound as if Alabama played nobody. They're, no, they're, 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 Go ahead. Yes, you are. Because they're in, they're in the top five in strength, mm. of, in strength of schedule. Yes. Florida State's 55th. I totally get what you're saying. It's absolutely heartbreaking and devastating for them. The ACC has a winning record against the SEC yes. this year, 6-4. and four. Two non-conference games for Florida State this year against the SEC, and they won both of them. I get it. But they, they're a different team, and this has been your point, Joey. Yes, that, that has been my point. And so I feel awful for Florida State and Jordan Travis because if he was still playing, this would be a different conversation. Everything you speak of – was accomplished with Jordan Travis as their quarterback. They won the last and two games we, without him. Yes, though. and and that's when we saw this team with Tate Rodemaker and Brock with Glenn. Brock Glenn. Yes, fifty-five yards passing last night. It wasn't pretty. Here's the thing, book. And and honestly, I hear everything you're saying. If our goal is to have the four best teams. There's nothing to do with what you deserve. There's nowhere in the bylaws that say you have to be undefeated. There's nowhere in the bylaws that say if you're in a Power 5 conference, you're the champion undefeated, you get in. Mm -hmm. I feel terrible. But when we look at this Florida State team and what they are today, what they were mm -hmm. last night, what Alabama, who lost to Texas, who was the third team in this thing, yeah. what they were then and what they are now, this Alabama team is different, and you know this. And this Florida State team is different, and you know this. They lost their quarterback. It's not a receiver. If Worthy doesn't play for Texas, they're still a really good football mm -hmm. team. When you lose your quarterback, that is different than any other position in any other sport on earth. Let's, let's, your quarterback's the you most You just got to win player. a different way. Let's get Kirk in quickly. Kirk, when you, you've heard these, these discussions and these arguments, there's a lot on Florida State's side. Uh, from winning against the SEC to the ACC, success against the SEC. Is this simply a case where had Jordan Travis not been hurt or, to be fair, let's say Tate Rodemaker had really put up some numbers offensively in the Florida game so you had a little more data to support that Florida State would be competitive, that this would be a no-brainer decision and the Seminoles would be in. And this all centers around the established criteria by the committee that they evaluate injuries. Well, you'd have to ask Boo that when, when he hops on here in well, a couple minutes, but, but I think all of us, yeah. 
I, I think if, if Tate went out and lit it up, it'd be a lot like what Cardell Jones did for Ohio State. I think people, I think the committee evaluated based on what they saw. And by the way, what Florida State did at the Swamp was impressive. I called that game. That was a tough environment. I don't care what Florida's record was. That game was impressive for them to be able to get out of that game with a backup quarterback. But when you're looking at what they did the last two games and you're evaluating, they went all the way down to the third guy, a freshman. This is nothing against Mike Norvell. I think we all are proud and so happy to see that Florida State brand back from where it was three, four, five years ago to where it is now. It has sustainability and it's going to be around with Mike and they're going to do a great job. To me, if you took J.J. McCarthy off of Michigan, we'd be saying the same thing right now about Michigan. If you took Michael Penix off of Washington the last two games and they were struggling with a backup quarterback, we wouldn't be looking at the totality of Washington's season. We'd be looking at the last two games. You have to look at the last couple games without the heart and soul. This guy is the face of this resurgence of Florida State, Jordan Travis, and to take him out is just as big as any player in the country that you would take off that roster. So to me, it's a reflection of what he meant to that team specifically in these last two weeks, giving Tate and giving Brock the backup, uh, the third string guy, an opportunity. And it's just a reality. You're comparing them Alabama to Florida State. You got to give Alabama the nod, even though they had a close game against Auburn in a rivalry game. They beat Georgia on a neutral site, and Georgia was the team, and Alabama just beat them. You cannot take Alabama out of this. They have to be in, and I, uh, I think the committee did a great job. I, I tip my cap as well.